All rights reserved. This video has been prepared for educational purposes only. No part of it may be reproduced or copied without the permission of the copyright holder. Sound is an interesting phenomena, but it is not easy to understand. There was a huge debate about the sound and its mathematical expressions uh, when Newton was doing research on it. Hello everyone, I am Sachin Kumar, welcome to S. Chand Academy and today in this lecture we are going to discuss about acoustic waves and especially the speed of sound. What are acoustic waves? I am going to explain this in a while. But what is sound? Sound as we have discussed in our last lecture, the sound is basically when energy is transferring through longitudinal mode. If you wanna study in depth about these topics, you can refer this book by S. Chan Publishing. You can also find its ebook links in the description box. In our previous lecture, we also found that, okay, so there is a relation between the pressure difference and the density difference of a medium on which this, the velocity of sound depends. So we, uh, in our last lecture, we found that, so there is some pressure difference PE and there is some density difference rho E and kappa is the constant of proportionality in between them, which is totally a property of the medium. But we don't know this property of the medium. How to calculate this value k? So this was, uh, there was a great debate on this. And we also uh, summarized our results like k is equal to c square where C is the velocity of sound waves in air. In this way, we can find its velocity. But in all equations, we have this value kappa, which is still a mystery for us. How to solve this? How to get rid of this? So there was a great debate how to derive the formula or the expression or understand about the velocity of sound in air. Newton came first. Newton started the debate, started uh, the expression and he uh, imagined like, uh, first of all, I am telling you when there is a change in density in the gas, then obviously there should be a change in temperature in the gas as well. Where there is a higher density, the temperature will go higher and where there is a lower density, the temperature will go lower. So thermodynamically this should happen and uh, this is the basic phenomena one should notice at the very first stage to understand this phenomena. So Newton said, okay, this phenomena should be an isothermal process. It means he said like the temperature of the whole environment should remain the same. There should not be slight fluctuation because the temperature difference between two nearby regions is very small. And also when the temperature difference is very small, then we can also say that this temperature difference, okay, so from the higher temperature to lower temperature, they transferred heat quickly and finally they reach to the same temperature again. That's why isothermal means same temperature. This should be an isothermal process. Newton argued on that. And he derived an expression according to that. For some days he was happy after deriving this. But later it was found that the Newton was wrong in his explanation. This kind of phenomena like sound, they don't obey this kind of 
isothermal phenomena to happen when there is a variation in density so with the variation in density when there is a change in temperature laplace further added that this should be an adiabatic phenomena so thermodynamically there should not be any change because the process is so quick and uh, second thing we can understand the wavelength of sound is so huge and how uh, means uh, this air molecules transfer energy from one point to another point they transfer it through convection so when something is heated so these particles will move further and transfer its heat energy to another particle after striking them so their mean free path is the length after which averagely they are going to strike some other molecule in the air but the length of mean free path is very much smaller than the wavelength of sound so sound is traveling on a bigger scale while the energy transfer the mean free path for energy transfer is quite small so then this was the argument given by the laplace and finally he presented this that this process should be adiabatic and this was uh, okay finally understood that yes this process should be adiabatic now uh, then what if uh, we generate a sound of so high frequency that its wavelength is comparable to the mean free path of the gas if the mean free path of the gas and the wavelength of the sound are comparable in that case it was observed that this medium absorbs energy even in that case this phenomena doesn't happen isothermally but the energy of the sound wave is absorbed by the medium so the lesser your is your wavelength the more the absorption is and in case when you are comparable so it will go higher and it will become difficult for you to transmit such waves through air now uh, we have understood this topic like uh, initially it was started with a debate newton argued that it should be isothermal and then laplace said okay this is adiabatic newton was wrong laplace was right now when we know that this is the adiabatic phenomena uh, to understand the velocity of sound the adiabatic phenomena should be used here is the point that we understand what are acoustic waves first of all we understand what is sound the sound is basically a part of acoustic waves but the basic funda is that that it should be adiabatic the process should happen adiabatically in acoustic waves the energy transfers from one point to another point using compressions and decompressions as usual just like sound waves and this should be the adiabatic process the broader definition is of acoustic waves and the sound wave is a part of it this is because the mean free path of gas molecules is uh, about a million times uh, shorter than the wavelength of sound wave acoustic waves covers the bigger spectrum in which a smaller part comes in our audible range to which we call as sound waves now we need to derive its expression using adiabatic phenomena but to understand this we will take a short break and after that we will continue with this expression hi i am manisha singla इनऑर्गेनिक और ऑर्गेनिक के कुछ डिफिकल्ट कॉन्सेप्ट को आसानी से समझाने के लिए मैं आ रही हूँ एस चांद अकेडमी में तो अगर आप हमारे वीडियोज़ को देखना चाहते हैं तो सब्सक्राइब जरूर कीजिए
वेलकम बैक टू एस चंद अकेडमी बिफोर गोइंग टू द ब्रेक वी वर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द एडियाबेटिक फिनोमिना अकोस्टिक वेव्स साउंड वेव्स एंड नाउ वी वॉन्ट टू डिराइव एन एक्सप्रेशन फॉर द वेलोसिटी ऑफ साउंड वेव्स नाउ फ्रॉम एन अर्लियर एक्सप्रेशन वी नो दैट दैट प्रेशर इज इक्वल टू कापा दिस क्वान्टिटी रो and now if i differentiate pressure with respect to density i get this value kappa so this is the basic relation i can get so i am defining p not and rho not at this place that's why i am writing this not here uh, this is the very first relation now we are going to derive it further to know about the velocity of sound so basically this is an adiabatic phenomena so in case of adiabatic phenomena we know that p v gamma is equal to a constant this equation defines adiabatic processes in which p is the pressure of the gas v is the volume and gamma is a constant which is defined by cp by cv uh, specific heat in uh, constant pressure and constant volume so like that so pv gamma is a constant now you know that uh, this v volume and density are inversely proportional to each other so i can write it like this volume and density are inversely proportional to each other so in this way i can write p is equal to a constant and rho raised to the power gamma so i can write it like this further in this expression now we have this condition p is equal to constant rho raised to the power gamma now if i differentiate this i get dp by d rho which i can correlate with this quantity dp by d rho i have derived earlier and on differentiating on the right hand side i will get something like gamma p divided by rho so first differentiating and then substituting the value of p from the earlier expression we can write this expression like this now dp by d rho is this quantity gamma p by rho now guys we also know that c square is equal to this quantity kappa and this kappa is equal to this quantity dp by d rho so overall c square can be written as gamma p by rho so this is the simplest expression uh, in which we can explain it like this uh, now we want to simplify it further and to simplify it further we can multiply and divide it with volume v in the numerator we get this value pv and from the equation of state we know that pv is equal to kt where t is the temperature of the medium uh, in our case this is air and density into volume accounts for the mass so this is the simplified expression in which we have gamma k t divided by this value mass but uh, this is the mass of one molecule but we can further simplify it we can multiply n which is avogadro number kt in the numerator and n in the denominator so finally this value nk becomes r so gamma rt divide by this n into m becomes a quantity which i can write as mu so earlier it was the mass of one molecule but now this is the molecular weight of the gas in this way the final expression for the velocity of sound becomes gamma rt by mu and 
square root of this in this way we can understand the temperature of the medium the temperature of the air is a responsible factor which can vary the velocity of sound in air and also the molecular weight of the molecules in the air in between source and the receiver also determines its velocity heavier the molecule lower will be the velocity of sound in that gas in case you come to an environment where you find helium and you speak there you will find that the velocity of your sound will increase and as the velocity will increase its frequency will also increase so you will observe a high pitch sound in that case now from the kinetic theory of gases we also know that this quantity kt is equal to 1 by 3 of mv square where we take the average of this quantity v square and basically uh, this v square is the mean square velocity if i substitute this in the earlier derived equation i get a quantity like this where c is where c square is equal to gamma by 3 v square average and on further simplifying this equation we get c average is equal to gamma by 3 v average and uh, square root on this gamma by 3 finally this is the expression where gamma is the constant which defines adiabatic processes which is the ratio of cp and cv v average is the average velocity of the air molecules in this way uh, it seems that uh, the velocity of sound is somehow proportional to uh, the velocity of the molecules in the air or when the molecules are moving they are also carrying sound with them but this phenomena is not that easy and straight forward to understand that air molecules are carrying the sound with them or with their average velocity the velocity of sound is being determined so this phenomena is not easy to define in a simple box like this in a nutshell i can say that the average velocity of sound is approximately half the average velocity of air molecules in air so that's why i am saying this phenomena is not that straight forward so uh, the phenomena of longitudinal waves or acoustic waves can be understood only through a broader picture not just uh, by simplifying this equation in a few words if you want to study in depth about these topics you can refer this book by s chand publishing you can also find its ebook links in the description box please don't forget to like share and subscribe stay connected have a good day